questions, notice, right to present evidence and testimony, timeliness, and with the exception of the short-term suspension, um, appeal rights. And this is going to, this PowerPoint's going to be available, right? Yeah. Okay, so a lot of times we have parents and now more and more students um, claiming that they want their lawyer. So when can a student have a lawyer? When are they entitled to a lawyer? Here you have, at a due process hearing, students can have lawyer, a lawyer, the parents can get one, at an expulsion or an appeal of a long-term suspension, at an IEP meeting, a 504 meeting, at an MDR. All of these um, meetings, a student is entitled to have a lawyer present if they want one. And if you all notify us and want us to be there, we will also be there to represent the district or the school administration um, at those meetings if we have uh, time and enough notice. When is the student not entitled to a lawyer? Student is not entitled to a lawyer at a DTM. A student is not entitled to a lawyer at a parent meeting. A lot of times you'll have parent want to meet with the principal or the principal designee and they show up with a lawyer. And the question always comes to legal, do we have to meet with them? No, you do not have to meet with them. One, you weren't given any notice to let us know and we don't come to those parent meetings anyway because the principal never has to meet with the lawyer. Even if the parent signs something that says, I give my lawyer a right to talk to my behalf, you, as the principal or principal designee school staff, you do not have to talk to a lawyer who is representing a parent um, in some complaint against the district. Any questions about that? Okay, so just to wrap up, I want to talk about due process and some special circumstances. So students with disabilities, this is what we, we see quite a bit of. So due process rights for students with disabilities, there's almost like an extra layer. So in 504, we have a, a grievance process. In, um, for EC cases, we also have a, a due process um, state hearing that students are entitled to. Um, so you just want to be aware of that. Are students with disabilities treated like non-disabled students? Are they treated the same or differently? Okay, a little bit trick. It depends. Students with disabilities should, in all aspects of school programs and opportunities, um, rights be treated the exact same as non-disabled students or gen ed students. Sometimes disabled students have additional protections which we just talked about. So example for an N MDR, um, and won't go over this too much because Cindy talked about it, but when they remove for more than 10 days, and 10 days can be cumulative, Cindy already explained that, the MDR must be held within 10 days of decision to change placement. Now what I'm, and with a non-disabled student, a change of placement means that you take them out of the school. So even if they're sent home, that's a change of placement. So you have to do that. What I saw um, last year that concerned me, and I just want to put this bug in, in your ear, is that a lot of times I saw students who were suspended for 10 days and they didn't hold the MDR until the ninth day or the 10th day. Um, and while that technically meets the standard of the law, I don't think that that's the practice that we want to have in place because it's basically moot at that point. And I feel like that is denying the student some protection that they are entitled to if in fact their um, behavior was a manifestation um, of their disability, then that student shouldn't be out for 10 days and wait till the 10th day to have the MDR. So just keep that in mind um, when you're scheduling and planning these meetings. Um, Oh, services provided when there's a long-term suspension and sometimes an expulsion. So that is something that's very different. Students who, are, who um, have an IEP or 504 plan, if they get long-term suspended or expelled, they are still entitled to educational services. Your gen ed student, um, out of luck, 
in, in that regard, but your special ed student, unless there is a dangerous situation, is generally going to be entitled to continue to receive um, services that allow them to progress in their IEP goal. And you really need to make sure that you're working with the 504 and the IEP team um, to determine what that is. That doesn't mean that they get full classes eight hours a day, it just means that they have access to educational services. Okay, back to Betty and Joan. Joan was suspended for 10 days and is being recommended for a long-term suspension. Betty is an EC student with autism. Betty has previously had a 10-day suspension, so the principal says she will not suspend her, but called Betty's mom to come pick her up for the rest of the day. This is not proper because why? D, Betty engaged in a mutual fight and may be eligible for a suspension. Betty is being sent home. Betty has not had an MDR. D is correct. All of the above. Betty may be eligible for more than just a being sent home for the day. Um, if, if her actions were not a result of her disability, and she can be punished the same way any other kid has, uh, does, um, but she is entitled to an MDR, and she is being sent home because being sent home means what? Right, Be sending students home is suspension. No more of just, oh, well, we're not gonna suspend you, we're just gonna call your mom to come pick you up. No, that's a suspension. Anytime you remove a kid from the school for a discipline, that constitutes a suspension, and that means it needs to be documented, it needs to count towards the days, not just for EC students, but for all students as documentation. So cutting the day short is suspension. Okay, last one, I know my time is up. Uh, when asked about the incident, Joan stated, I hit her because the freak kept staring at me. The principal should do nothing and chalk it up to, immature, to an immature adolescent comment, make a note in the file, but it doesn't warrant anything further, agree with Joan because Betty does stare a lot, <laughs> D, stop and consider, sorry, that should say consider, not considers. Stop and consider whether the assault, assault is related to Betty's autism. What should the principal do? I think. D. D is the correct answer because a characteristic of autism is a staring, like that mild stare. And while Joan is a student and not an LEA or an SEA or an administrator, it is the administration's responsibility that if a student is being discriminated against because of a disability, that the administration step in some way. That could just be talking to Joan and saying, hey, you know, we need to make sure we're inclusive of everyone and not make fun. It could be investigating to see if this is a larger class problem or school problem because OCR is not going to care if, if the principal says, oh, well, that's just what Joan says when Betty's mom files a complaint for disability-based discrimination. They're going to want to know what the school did to put a cap on this situation. So when, a, when the principal would say, hey, I sat down with Joan, I spoke with her, I gave her some books to read, I checked back in with her two weeks later, she said she understands, that's an action that the school can document that it took. Um, and then really finally, bullying. Uh, in addition to disability-based bullying, we, we're seeing more and more bullying. That's something that um, we have John Councilman's office. So I know that they're out doing outreach and education all the time. So you definitely, if you have a bullying situation, need to see if there's something more than just, you know, we're, we're really beyond this idea of boys will be boys and girls are mean kind of thing because there are larger implications for the district when um, a student uh, or a parent claims 
of bullying. So we really want to make sure that we're handling these incidents. And then sexual misconduct, sexual conduct can equal sexual harassment. And there can be other protections or due process rights if Title IX is involved. If a student does something to another student, even a young elementary student, we've seen third grade, second grade, complaints of Title IX that is sexual in nature and unwanted, then you need to do an investigation under Title IX. And each, is it each school or each learning community that has a Title IX officer? Every school, okay, that's what I thought. So that, that person needs to step in and investigate because that can lead to OCR complaints and lawsuits. Oh, I'm going backwards. What's happening? Okay, I don't know, but the, my last slide just said questions. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it.